Welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's weekend roundup time. So the Steam Deck is here. Well, at least for some people, the reviews are in. Let's see. Mm, how are the reviews? Oh. Wait, there's no score. Thanks a lot, Metacritic. Now, how am I supposed to know where to send death threats? Golly, now I gotta read actual reviews. Boo. All right. So let's get into some actual reviews. And like everything, critics have mixed opinions on the Steam Deck. Lots of them really like it, with the consensus being that it is a portable powerhouse with a lot of potential. And that potential being, of course, the ability to access your library of Steam games on the go. Basically, a much more powerful version of the Switch with a bigger library that you can still lug around on a commute or play around the house. Tech Radar called the Steam Deck a brilliant gaming device that should appeal to PC gamers looking for a way to play their games while on the go. And that really sums up what they're aiming for with the Steam Deck. Digital Foundry said, from a hardware perspective, this handheld has genuinely exceeded expectations. And Digital Foundry, if they like your hardware, then it's pretty good hardware. Bloomberg said the Steam Deck is ideal for those of us who have small children and need to be constantly moving. I feel seen, I feel seen. I can play something while watching Peppa Pig against my will. This is fantastic. All right, so that's a summation of the good stuff. Now, onto the more critical side. A lot of reviewers said the device has many issues that detract from the experience. The Verge summed it up, saying flat out that the Steam Deck is, quote, not ready. While the reviewer said they were having fun with it, they also called it a mess, saying it's rushed, unfinished, buggy, and unstable. Ugh. That's a bad foursome right there. If Valve sold the console I've been playing at Best Buy or GameStop, people would return it in droves. Now, all of the faults with the Steam Deck can kind of be broken down into a few categories. One, battery life that at the highest fidelity can be two hours, maybe less. Buggy software that feels unfinished. The Verge said, every single day I used the Steam Deck, I was dodging error messages, bugs, crashes, black screens, UI glitches, regressions, even entire feature changes from Valve on the eve of release. And some big name games flat just don't run on the Steam Deck. The Verge said that games like PUBG or Destiny 2 don't run on it. Neither do Apex Legends or GTA 5 or Lost Ark or Halo Infinite or Back for Blood. Wire said that one of the Steam Deck's biggest flaws is its buggy operating system, with things like a startup bug loop that required a full factory reset. They wrote, several problems I ran into have already been patched, but considering the sheer number of bugs I've seen, there's a good chance you'll run into your fair share. Ars Technica's reviewer said it took them seven tries to boot up GTA GTA 5. They wrote, even then, however, I ran into another weird issue. I had to restart the game four more times before it would accept any settings changes. IGN said it took them an agonizing two minutes and 30 seconds to load Deathloop. They also couldn't get GTA 5 to run. Maybe y'all should have tried it seven times, IGN. I'm just saying, persistence pays off. Oh, and they said the Skyrim Special Edition was a, quote, big disappointment, writing, at its lowest settings, it ran at a solid 60 FPS until I swung my weapon at which point all sound would cut out and the frame rate would drop to the point that it would freeze altogether. Yikes. But they did have some good experiences too, writing that playing God of War on the device was pretty damn amazing. They noted though that battery life was an issue too. IGN said they got just around 90 minutes playing God of War on the machine. And for portables, battery life is obviously really important. Overall though, IGN liked it, calling it a well-built piece of hardware and saying, when you're playing a Valve approved game, it's actually incredible to get this kind of performance out of a device so small and compact, even if the battery can be gone in a flash if you're not careful. But on the eve of its official launch, it isn't the smooth user experience I had hoped it would be. The Washington Post reviewer said that some games ran or controlled poorly, others didn't run at all. They added, throughout the review period, Valve issued regular updates and repeatedly promised many issues will be gone by launch, but I can only review what I experienced and what I experienced felt like the future's beta test. Overall though, the post was positive on the potential of the Steam Deck writing, it's hard not to be floored by the Steam Deck when everything comes together. There's a geeky joy to realizing you can run a game like The Witcher 3 nigh perfectly on a handheld. Nice backhanded slap to the Switch version of Witcher 3. Uh, it kind of deserves it, it's pretty terrible. Oh, and speaking of the hardware, you might have seen some videos of users saying they're already experiencing stick drift on the Steam Deck. Luckily, it's a software problem. Valve has quickly rolled out a fix, so that's good. So there you go, a lot of potential in the Steam Deck, but it doesn't sound like it's 
quite there yet. But in fairness to the Steam Deck, lots of newly released hardware has issues. It's practically a rite of passage. The Switch had issues. Uh, many Xboxes have had issues. PlayStations have had it. So this is common and hopefully all this will get ironed out. Tech Radar gave it four and a half stars saying, if you're a PC gamer with a large Steam library and you're used to the quirks and annoyances that come with playing PC games, then you'll likely love the Steam Deck and overlook its rougher edges. So there you go. All right, we'll get to the rest of the stories in just a second, but first guys, you like podcasts, right? Everybody does. There's a new one out called Ship Hits the Fan that I'm producing with Charlotte and Patrick. It's great, but did you know there's a podcast festival at RTX Austin this year? Podcasts of all kinds are coming here to Austin July 1st through the 3rd to do live recordings of their shows, and you could be there. Add some fun to your summer plans. Come see your favorite podcasts in person and discover new favorites at RTX Austin. It takes the best in podcasting, gaming, and animation and brings it all to Austin for one unforgettable weekend. Step into the exhibit hall and be transported to another world filled with cosplayers, live gaming, indie artists, and more. Of course, health and safety, number one priority for us. Masks will be required during the event. We'll follow city guidelines. If you're unable to attend due to COVID, we'll work with you to postpone your badge for the following year, or you can request a refund. But here's what you gotta do. If you're coming, head over to bit.ly slash RTX Austin 22, just rolls off the tongue, to grab your badge for RTX Austin and get ready for a weekend filled with the best of podcasting, gaming, and animation. That's bit.ly slash RTX Austin 22 to get your badge today. And we'll see you in Austin July 1st the third. On to the rest of the stories. We've got yet another rumor about the Switch 2, the Super Switch, the Switch Pro, whatever you want to call it. This latest one was part of a big NVIDIA leak that revealed some confidential info about upcoming products, but some people notice in source files something called NVN2. That is allegedly the graphics API for the next gen Switch 2 or the Switch Pro consoles. And that is important because NVIDIA previously referred to the original Switch as NVN2. In. So NBN2 uh, sounds like a sequel to me. Twitter user Nikki poked around and said that NBN2 quote seems to be the graphics API for the Switch Pro based on Ampere with ray tracing support and new DLSS 2.2 technology. Now, of course, the Switch Pro has been rumored for years and years now. Bloomberg reported last year that at least 11 studios had 4K Switch dev kits, which Nintendo denied. Some outlets though have blamed the global chip shortage as the reason why we haven't gotten an upgraded Switch yet, but sounds like those plans are still definitely in the works. Elden Ring is off to a huge start out of the gates. Last time I checked, it had hit a peak of more than 890,000 players on Steam. That's huge. That makes it from software's biggest Steam launch yet. There have been some complaints from Steam players about the game stuttering on PC. I've definitely noticed that too. From Software has said they're working on it, but that has not stopped people from playing it. Meanwhile, in the UK, Elden Ring is the fastest selling Souls game ever, beating the box sales of Dark Souls 3 by 26%. It's the third biggest retail launch of the year behind Pokemon Legends Arceus and just behind Horizon Forbidden West. Speaking of Elden Ring, its publisher Bandai Namco did a good thing on the heels of the game's release. It bumped up the pay of its Japanese staff by an average of 50,000 yen a month. That's about $432 US. That's a nice bump. In a release, they said they were increasing salaries, quote, with the aim of improving working conditions by stabilizing employee income. Now, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has been in all the headlines. Obviously, we've heard about it all over the world and it is spilled into the gaming industry. War Gaming, the studio that makes World of Tanks, fired its creative director, Sergei Berkatovsky, because he voiced support for the Russian invasion of Ukraine. After Russia's attack on Ukraine, Berkatovsky posted on Facebook, he supports, quote, the operation of the armed forces of the Russian Federation, the Donetsk People's Republic, and the Luhansk People's Republic. Wargaming is a Belarusian company that employs hundreds of developers in Ukraine's capital of Kyiv, disavowed the statement, and the studio later told PC Gamer that he had left the company, saying Sergei Berkatovsky expressed his personal opinion on social media, which categorically does not reflect the position of the company. He has been let go and is no longer at the company. Xbox boss Phil Spencer got a Lifetime Achievement Award at DICE 22 last week, and he called for gamers to ease up 
on developers. Go easy on it. Maybe, maybe 20% less death threats. Spencer addressed the gaming community in an interview with IGN saying, let's respect creators. I think it's very often that creations can be kind of weaponized and used in battles between platforms and other things. Let's just celebrate the fact that so many great games are coming out from so many creators and realize that's such a foundation for where this industry is going to go. Now, Phil, of course, has been vocal against toxicity in gaming in the past. This is certainly in keeping with that. And if you're wondering who the big winners were at the 25th annual DICE Awards, it takes two one game of the year. Meanwhile, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Returnal, and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy all got awards for technical and artistic excellence. All right, time for a five second review. So there were these two giant monsters pulling a wagon, minding their own business, and I just killed them. Still feel kind of bad about it. All right, let's get to the games coming out next week. First up, Distant Worlds 2 is a vast, pausable, real-time 4X space strategy game. Experience the full depth and detail of turn-based strategy, but with the simplicity and ease of real-time and on the scale of a massively multiplayer online game. The universe is yours. Comes to PC March 10th, Submerged Hidden Depths is a non-combat, third-person, relaxed exploration adventure set in the sunken ruins of a beautiful world. Take on the world of Miku and Taku, one cursed with the mysterious power that she wants to use for good, the other determined not to let it tear them apart. Comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One March 10th. Time Loader is a story-driven puzzle platformer with tiny robots, alternate realities, nostalgic music, and primitive tech from the 90s. Hey, I'm primitive tech from the 90s. It comes to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch March 10th. Workshop Simulator allows you to repair and refurbish items using a range of restoration mechanics such as disassembling, cleaning, sanding, and painting. The accompanying story will immerse you in the nostalgia of tinkering with your grandfather. Gross. It comes to PC, PS4, Xbox One, March 10th. Dot hack GU last recode. Dot hack GU is back. This collection includes all three original Dot Hack GU titles, Rebirth, Reminisce, and Redemption, all fully restored and remastered, as well as an all new fourth volume Dot Hack GU Reconnection. Comes to the Switch March 11th. And last but not least, WWE 2K22. It's back. Unleash dives, kickouts, and finishers with the biggest and most realistic WWE superstars and legends The Rock, Sasha Banks, Goldberg, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Brock Lesnar, and more. Hitting this hard has never been so easy. Everything from the controls to the stunning graphics has been redesigned and feels as real as being ringside at WrestleMania. I cannot wait for the glitch compilations. It's your turn to call the shots as a WWE general manager. Take the reins of Raw, SmackDown, NXT, or NXT UK, and draft your ultimate roster of WWE superstars and legends. Then compete against a rival GM to build the biggest brand in the WWE universe and try not to get fired by fans. It comes to PS5, X Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One, March 11th. That's all the news I got for you this week, guys. Hope you're having a great weekend. Watch Ship Hits the Fan, or listen to it better yet. See you soon.